Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about the brand new, well, it is brand new, but it's a re-release of 1914's album, The Blind Leading the Blind. The album came out in 2018. Napalm Records has signed the band and they're re-releasing the album on May 31st. The album has 11 tracks in 59 minutes. Let me just start by saying this. I'm so happy that Napalm Records signed the band and decided to re-release their album. This is one of those bands that if one of the major labels didn't pick it up, I would never have a clue of what these guys are all about, what their sound is and who they are. I would absolutely have no idea about this band unless a major label picked them up. Napalm picked them up, put them on my radar specifically when they sent me the album for review and immediately I was hooked and happy. Like I said, I really want to emphasize this because this is a band and a record that would absolutely have gone uh, under the radar for me. I would have never, never been able to listen to this album, find out about it. I just had no idea about it. And I'm so happy that these guys, that Napalm Records picked them up and that these guys were able to bring their album to the masses because this album, it was really good, really well put together. So let me give you a little bit of an idea of what to expect. 1914 is the name of the band and that's the year where the First World War started, also known as the Great War. So the band takes the name after World War I the album is really about storytelling and telling stories about the Great War. Now, these guys take the concept of being a band that tells war stories to a whole new level. Not only are you going to get uh, the musical side of things, not only are you going to get the storytelling and the lyrics, they also dress the part. So they really take the whole concept to a whole new standard. And in this album, I like what they did with this record on many fronts. For If you're not familiar with the band, this is pretty much a blackened death metal band, but I felt, listening to the record, paying extremely attention to all the little details, that there were some doom metal influences on some of the tracks. The doom influences are not specifically on every track of the album, but there are, at least in my opinion, enough atmospheric elements, enough doom elements to really feel like this is a black and death metal band that really dips their toes a little bit uh, in, in the doom genre. When you mix these three genres, doom perhaps to a, a smaller extent, but when you mix these three genres, it really allows for a different kind of wartime storytelling. The songs are not happy, they're not go lucky, they're not um, uh, with high tempos, if you will, they're not uh, jolly. They paint a much darker, uh, gruesome picture of what the war was. Uh, they really give you a sense of you actually being in the trenches uh, when you're listening to the lyrics that, as the songs are, are going by really a vivid picture is painted by these guys and a lot of it has to do obviously with the lyrics because those are the themes of the songs but i think it goes beyond the lyrics the lyrics are there to tell you the story but you only get the vivid image of what's happening uh, in battle what's happening in the war what's happening in the great war by the music and by the style that they incorporate with the songs depending on what the songs call for depending on what the story of the song is and then by adding some atmospheric elements, by adding some doom elements here and there. All of these things put together really allowed for the stories to come to life. They really paint, like I said, a very gruesome, dark and horrible picture of what the war was about. And then when you add the lyrics and you add the vocals, the style of the vocals, the, the style of the vocals is absolutely gut-wrenching. I love it. The, the, they're, it. They're harsh vocals, not overly guttural harsh vocals. You can understand what he's singing. But it adds so much darkness, it adds so much anger, so much pain to the delivery that even helps those lyrics transcend themselves and really become uh, a, a living, uh, a moving piece of art. It, it's absolutely phenomenal the way they paint the picture, the way they use the different styles, the different, the different genres to really incorporate it well. Uh, the, the atmospheric elements, like I said, they also used some some what it sounds to me like uh, cuts and pieces from movies, from war movies, and they incorporate that in some of the tracks to really add uh, an atmosphere, to really add a scenario, to add, to add a sort of, to paint a much larger picture of where their story is included. I really like that. It adds a completely different dynamic. Listening to this record from the first song to the last song, 
you almost lose yourself in it and you feel like you're listening to an audiobook more than you are listening to a metal album absolutely phenomenal work I, they won me over with this album and once again i'm so glad that this is being re-released because i don't think enough people paid attention to this record when it came out last year absolutely phenomenal work they have an intro and an outro track and then in squeeze in between those tracks there's nine incredible dark melodic atmospheric stories of war and death that's what you're going to get from this record all right guys as far as songs are concerned i picked three songs that i absolutely adored on the record for different reasons the first one is high woods 75 acres of hell this one has more of an atmospheric battle intro that really sets the tone sets the mood for the song it's more of a black and death metal song from the start from the moment that intro dissipates that's what this song is about this song is perhaps one of those tracks that really represents the album well because it really gives you an idea what to expect from the band and what to expect from the overall uh, record it's a dark track with some melodic elements and some atmospheric elements not only that start that intro but also in the chorus i really felt that the chorus was a little bit more melodic almost like melodic black metal um and also some atmospheric elements were present in that chorus the song is really made up of two worlds a more melodic uh methodic uh portion which is in the chorus and a more aggressive abrasive verses it's really uh two worlds that are coming together two worlds that as the song progresses you really feel like start to blend one into the other second song is beat the bastards for those of you that don't know this is an original song from the exploited a punk band and so this is more of a, a black and punk cover if you will it has some uh opening bagpipes at the start of the song that's really different it really sets a different mood it almost feels like you're marching into war uh it, it has a different dynamic it really changes a lot from what the original was all about i like this cover i like the aggression that they added to the song i like the fact that they still kept a lot of the punk elements of the original song into this song and then they just added some you know some blackened uh components to give the song a little bit of more of a darkness but also to really allow the song to blend in with the stories of the album this song almost feels like it belonged into this record because of the context of the of the lyrics of the song but i like what they did they kept the original punk vibe of the song they just added some black metal elements to it created a little bit more extra darkness to it made they made the song their own this is a cover but they made the song their own last but not least my absolute favorite song on the album the 100 days offensive it's the second last before the outro all right so i absolutely love this song a few things i want to mention about this song first of all i like the very doom melodic intro uh, specifically from the guitars that this song has i absolutely adore it then you get a dialogue of a soldier talking asking forgiveness of another soldier that he killed in the trenches that almost reminded me of one from metallica it, it not musically not lyrically there's there's nothing in common with the two the only thing in common is one uh, from metallica has that has those those dialogues of, of of the soldier in bed in a coma speaking to himself asking to die so that can set them free and this song incorporated a similar style by having the soldier talking to the other dead soldier that he killed asking him for forgiveness for what he had done i really like that that added a completely different dimension to the intro of the song the, the song was very melodic very beautiful adding that component makes the song extremely dark and then the onslaught comes in the story of this song is absolutely phenomenal it really takes you through the story the, i mean the title of the song the 100 days offensive the lyrics really are representation of, of that story of the of the great war and it takes it from a perspective of four soldiers that are fighting in this war together and they find themselves in the middle of this battle and as the song progresses they start to die off one by one uh, because of different reasons first you have bombs uh, shells uh, flying all over then you have poisonous gas then you have rifles shooting at you they, they just go through different stages of the of that war of that battle if you will so they go through different stages there's four of them at the beginning and they all start to die off with each single stage that they are progressing through but the lyrics the lyrics of this song are it, 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 there is a repetitiveness to the lyrics they change only what's causing them to die and they change a few parts of the lyrics in terms of telling you who's dying and who's moving on 
The lyrics of this song are a masterpiece. When you put them together with the music, they create a masterpiece of a song. I love the atmosphere that the song gives. I love the beauty that it has. It's really a black and death metal song with some some doom or maybe melodic black metal components into it. My favorite song on the album, specifically for the story that it tells and how it tells it with the music. All right, guys, this is 1914, The Blind Leading the Blind, re-release out May 31st on Napalm Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the album in the comment section. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.